Hey guys, so today we're gonna brew a raw ale and the style we're gonna do is a lemon saison. And so what a raw ale is, is not boiled beer. So essentially we're just gonna be pasteurizing this. We're not actually gonna be sterilizing it with the boil. So we're just gonna knock down the amount of stuff that's in the wort and hope that it doesn't overtake our yeast. And we're kind of playing with fire here today. So I've got my claw hammer here. I'm going to just throw my insulation on and throw my water in here. So I'm using uh, tap water, just run through a pure filter and I'm gonna throw some Camden tab, well, I'm gonna throw a Camden tablet in here and that'll knock out all the chloramines and chlorine so we don't have to just leave it open all night. My grain basket's already in here so I don't forget it mainly and I'm gonna connect all the pumps and stuff and we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna start out with six and a half gallons. Um, I don't know if I took this into consideration when I did my recipe. Um, by the way, I did a video on the recipe. It's up here, so check that out. Super cool. So I don't know if I took into account the fact that we're not boiling it in the recipe, so I may have put down that we're gonna use seven gallons of water, but I think six and a half is going to be the ticket because yeah, we're gonna have grain absorption, um, but we're not gonna have the boil off that we usually do with the hour long boil because we're just doing like a half hour pasteurization at 180-ish. All right, so that's six and a half gallons. I'm gonna go ahead and start my heat. Um, this is all plugged in already. And then connect my pumps. So I'm setting my heat for, I'm gonna set it for 155. We're gonna do a 150 degree mash. Um, so I'm, I usually set my strike water about five degrees higher. Okay, so while this is going, I'm gonna add my calcium cord and gypsum. We are putting in one gram of each. So I'm using that LA water profile with a pure filter, so it doesn't need much addition to make a Saison style. So in this beer we're doing 12 pounds of Pilsner, and then our only other uh, grain is going to be eight ounces of honey malt. And here's the honey malt. And we're doing eight ounces. So our mill gap looks fine. I like to test my mill before I do the whole shebang. And that is why. Just make sure it's on properly and everything before I dump everything in there. God dang it. Oh! I'm tripping the breaker in my, my thing. All right, so I'm just turning on the heat for this and keeping the pump off so that I can actually run my drill. That's bizarre, I've never done that before. All right. Turns out you cannot heat things and run a drill at the same time on whatever power strip I'm on. Pretty sure we made flour, which is what I wanted. And that's about as much as this bucket can take. Okay, so we basically made flour and here it is, it's beautiful. Okay, so we are at um, just over 155, so we can now mash in. How did I do this last time? And my screen's already in here. So 
So I'm going to turn my temperature down to 150 um, because that is what we want it to be for our mash. Get it a little drier because um, raw beers are supposed to have more body than typical beers. I think it's because of the protein not um, like there's no hot break. So the protein doesn't like congeal and kind of like mush all together and fall out. So I think there's just more suspended protein. This is a thick mash. It's very flowery. Okay, so I'm gonna hook this back up. Actually, I'm gonna leave it like that, I like that. Um, just gonna keep it pumping. It'll break up any other clumps and stuff, if there is any. And it'll keep the temperature consistent. So I'm gonna set a timer for an hour and then we can mash out and start ramping up to our pasteurization. Okay, so now that I see how much 500 milliliters is, I don't think my four lemons can do it, so I might have to go run out. But I think I do have enough zest. So I'm just gonna do that now. Definitely not gonna have enough lemon juice. Okay, so we've got 11 grams there. <laughs> Ooh. I think the arbitrary numbers I picked for the amounts in this uh, were a little high, but I'm gonna stick with it. All right, so I only need seven more grams. I'm going to go see if there is more lemons outside. Okay, so our mash is done. Um, so I'm gonna just pull this grain uh, screen up and let it drain. And then I'm gonna ramp this up to 180. Okay. I'm just gonna let it drain like that for a minute. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my temp up to 180. Turn on my alarm for that. And let this guy drain out. Well, I may as well finish my lemons. I actually went to the store. So I'm gonna put this uh, lemon zest and lemon juice into the kettle, um, probably around the 15 minute mark, I'm going to put in the zest and then I'm going to wait until the last like minute of the 180 degrees, uh, to put that in. Cause I don't want it to like really denature the lemon juice at all and change the flavor. Um, I'm basically just going to throw it into flash pasteurize and then, uh, drop it down when we chill. And the way I'm gonna chill this is actually the way I did the last time. Um, I've got cool water in the kegerator right now that I'm gonna basically pump from my other kettle. So we need seven more grams of lemon zest. And the key to zesting is don't get the pith in it. Also, don't get a sticker in it. That's ideal. So that's five. We're almost there. Seven. Cool. Easy. All right. So that's all our zest. Oops. And now I'm just going to juice these lemons until I get this jar full. you don't have one of these lemon squeezers, get one. I have one up north and one in LA because I will never like use an actual citrus juicer for lemons or limes again. They're great. 
This is basically going to be lemonade beer, which I'm super stoked on. It is like 85 degrees in here right now. I don't know if you can see me sweating, but it is hot, hot, hot. And my AC barely works. I should probably be doing this outside, but I'm so super sunburnt and kind of afraid of that. Well, I was hoping to have enough lemons to make chicken piccata later, but I guess not. Those four large ones did the work of like 10 little ones. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. I'm just gonna stir this around a bit, make sure that it is still draining. All right, I'm gonna clean up and then hopefully by the time I'm done, it will be ready. So I've got to give another shout out to Yakima Valley Hops. Uh, they sent me a bunch of stuff in this bucket and I am obsessed with it. I think this will actually fit in it, which I don't have any buckets that it will actually fit in. Uh, so this could be a game changer. It fits! If it fits, it ships. So, our volume is at five and a half gallons now. I think I might add some water actually. So I'm just gonna check the original gravity. I'm actually gonna turn on this pump so that it mixes it all up together. So apparently when you do a raw ale, worrying about DMS is not really a thing because below 180 degrees, it apparently converts very slowly. So I don't know, we're gonna see. <laughs> so we have a pre-boil of 14 bricks. I don't even remember what my pre-boil is supposed to be. I haven't opened my brew father once. So our pre-boil gravity was supposed to be 1.055 at 6.5 gallons. So we're a gallon less than that. Um, our original gravity is supposed to be 1.06. So I think I'm going to kind of base everything off that. But let's see what. So 14 bricks is 1.059. So that is what we want for our original gravity. So we hit all our targets. Um, we were gonna go for 1.06. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to deal with the inevitable, uh, not boil off, but like evaporation. Cause we are right under five and a half gallons. Just barely. So I'm just gonna add a quarter gallon. And I'm gonna add whatever comes out of that. Uh, screen okay so i'm just going to turn on this pump so it'll circulate so for hops today we're using this new product it's called lupo max by yakima valley and we're using sabro hops only in this beer so this product kind of seems to me to be kind of a cross between a cryo hop and a normal t90 pellet so the whole idea is that it's got less vegetal matter in it um so there's just less crud in your beer and stuff um, so I'm going to do three ounces of this in the 30 minute pasteurization process. So I'm going to put it in right when we start, right when we hit 180 and then let it sit with it for 30 minutes. So I think I read that you're only supposed to use about 70% of the amount of hops that you usually do when you use these. Um, this probably seems like a lot of hops to you in a, for a saison, but if you think about it, we're only using them in like 180 degree wort, so the isomerization isn't gonna happen as well as it would like say if we were boiling them. So we're probably not gonna get a ton of bitterness from these hops, it's probably gonna be more of an aroma kind of thing, so like it's essentially a whirlpool is what we're doing. And um, you know, 
The Sabro hops are supposed to be citrusy, tropical fruit, but then have an underlayer of like caramel and cream. So I'm kind of hoping that this gets it, us into the, like the lemon tart arena. So yeah, I think for a Saison, uh, it'll work really well and uh, not just be like your run-of-the-mill fruity tart Saison. It might have like an actual caramelly underlayer, which sounds delicious. So it's up to 180 now and I'm gonna toss my hops in. I'm gonna use my uh, screen just to keep it out of all my stuff. And this is three ounces of the Sabro Lupo Max at like 19% alpha. Okay, so we have gotten to um, around 15 minutes. I just added some more wort that uh, came out of the bucket and I'm gonna throw in my lemon zest. I'm just gonna toss it right in. And I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes and set up my chilling. So I'm gonna try to remember how I did this last time. Uh, we've got our line from our kettle which is going to be filled with cold water to the pump and then the pump is going to go to the chiller in the water inside and then the water out is going to just go back into the kettle it's actually pretty simple like once you have it figured out and then i'm just going to wait until we're ready for that and then we can swap all the hoses and everything. Okay, so it has been the full 30 minutes of pasteurization or whatever. Um, so I've got my chiller all hooked up. I'm gonna move this hose to the wort in arena. Hello, quickly. And then my other hose is And then my work out, and we'll just drape it right in to the kettle. Okay. Um, I actually, um, I sanitized the crap out of this uh, plate chiller before I connected it. Um, just because, like, I don't, you know, sometimes when you use a plate chiller, like, you get crud coming out of it. And I didn't want anything to possibly infect this beer. I'm going to throw my lemon juice in now and I got to pull out my cold water. All right, so this is just about five gallons of chilled water. It's very heavy. And I got some chunks of ice I'm going to throw in there too. But I'm hoping to get this down to like 70 degrees just by this five gallons alone. All right, so, so I'm going to open my valve and turn on my water pump. Try to prime it. It doesn't seem to want to do that though. All right, at least there's a little bit of water in there to prime it. Okie dokie. So water is running. Great. And now we're going to do the other pump. I'm also going to add the ice to this. All right. This is already down to like 160. I just threw in some ice. Okay, so this is kind of stalled out at 108 degrees. Um, so I'm just gonna transfer it into my catalyst here. I'm just gonna sanitize it um, first. It's already been sitting with sanitizer for a week or so, so it should be fine. I'm just gonna put this under 
catch the, the sanitizer. Okay, so we are good to transfer. I'm gonna turn off my pump. I'm actually gonna turn off both pumps because if I start the glycol, it will probably blow my breaker. Okay, so I'm just gonna drape this guy in here, start the pump back up, and I'm gonna take my original gravity, if I can find my refractometer. So at about 107 right now, um, but I'm going to just chill it down with the glycol. So it looks like the water addition didn't do us any favors. We're at about uh, 13 and a half bricks now, but I'm gonna let this sit a little bit and to make sure. So we might be a little under, but that's fine. We'll still probably get a six and a half percent beer. It smells super, super, super lemony. It's kind of nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna re-sanitize this lid. Um, I've already done it once. Pop it in there. I'm gonna sanitize my thermo well. Drop it in my airlock. Of course it went right through. Throw that guy in there. And then I've got my thermo well probe. And then I'm just gonna throw in my airlock. Um, so I'll come back to this when it's around 70 degrees or so to pitch my yeast. And I'm just turning on this glycol chiller. And I'm just gonna set this at 65. So it's been a couple hours and this is now down to 65 degrees. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pitch my yeast. I've got a very abundant supply of French Saison yeast by White Labs. Um, I just did a, about an 800 milliliter starter with it and I'm gonna dump it in. So this should hopefully completely ferment out in like three or four days. Um, the French Saison yeast is a beast. There's still so much like protein suspended in the wort. It's kind of crazy. It's really, uh, wild to see how much not boiling it changes it and how much the boil actually does for your beer. So I'm super excited to try this one. Well, if you've gotten this far, you uh, probably enjoy the videos, I hope. Um, we just started doing channel memberships um, so you can get all the videos early and I'm doing shout outs and probably adding more stuff as I go. I just gotta get more organized. Um, well, thanks for watching, like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Memberships for this channel are now open. If you guys wanna see all the videos early, go ahead and join with the button above. And I wanna thank our latest member, Roland Blaze, for supporting us. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next time. I actually just found a uh additional use for gypsum. Uh, so I have a garden out back and I have this problem with my squash where the like squash actually rot on it like as soon as the blossom dies. And apparently it means it's calcium deficiency. So you can put gypsum in with your tomatoes and squash and stuff. Fun fact. Anyway, do the other pump. Fuck, 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 fuck. Shit, shit, shit. Ah! Okay, not ideal. Well, that'll be a fun blooper for everyone. Fuck. There's literally beer everywhere. And... Nope. Oh, you don't really get job today, Sarah. <gasps> what the fuck? How is it one second?